uh, ITF uh, 110. So, uh, Okay, uh, do you see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so, uh, as I mentioned, uh, so this is uh, uh, the proposal to uh, support uh, OEM uh, functionality in SFC and PLS environment, uh, where, um, so let me switch here. So, so, SFC basic unit introduced in RFC 8595. And um, it uh, emulates or simulates our um, NSH uh, network service uh, header, um, so that it includes um, their SFF uh, label and uh, SF label. Uh, it works interpretation is some and works somewhat differently uh, whether it's. Um, uh, label uh, swapping or label stacking, uh, but uh, their uh, major uh, issue that we ca uh, came across was that, um, as in SFC and SH, um, there is no um, assurance, there is no guarantee or requirement that uh, SF or uh, SF proxy uh, system uh, supports um, SFP OEM. So, for that reason, um, in uh, proposals that are in SFC working group for active uh, SFP OEM, then uh, SFF does not pass OEM uh, uh, payload to uh, SF or SF proxy. Um, and uh, for the case of NSH encapsulation in the data plane, um, the OEM, SFP OEM identified by the protocol type. So uh, we looked at uh, MPLS and um, um, the GAL was uh, introduced as the uh, indication of um, ACH. Uh, following their MPLS label stack. Um, and uh, in ACH, the uh, active OEM packets um, can be encapsulated. So that was our proposal that uh, signal to SFF uh, by inserting the GAL label uh, into their basic uh, unit. So here, um, their depiction of how this uh, um, basic unit OEM payload uh, will look like. And uh, it will be in a swapping mode or stacking mode. But when the stacking mode or mixed mode, because that's another uh, valid uh, scenario, uh, we'll have multiple basic units uh, encapsulating um, OEM packet, and that um, results in a GAL label being um, repeated, repeated multiple times. So that's uh, effectively how we arrived to the question of uh, multiple GAL labels in the uh, MPLS label stack. So, uh, could you help me? So, so you want a gal near the top, presumably, because you'd want to know whether it's worth the expensive uh, the expense in the forwarder of going to the bottom of stack. Is that correct? Um, yes. Yeah. Otherwise, you could just go look. Um, well, right. So, uh, one of possible alternatives that we discussed is that. Um, say that um, there will be only one gal label at the bottom and then regardless of uh, depth of their uh, label stack uh, each SFF for each packet will have to find their bottom of the stack label to verify whether it's gal or not right and there has to be one at the bottom of stack anyway 
Uh, well, that that was another. Or at least it has to be. It either has to be at the bottom of a stack, or you have to remember that you're getting rid of the last. Um, I forget what we call those service units, but the last cluster of three labels. Uh, otherwise, you've got no idea whether it's down there or not. Um, well, actually, yeah, the, the two labels, the basic unit. So, yes, uh, yes, yes. So you have a modified basic. Uh, just, just checking. I, I understand this. You have a modified basic unit, and at the bottom of stack is either a, a, your modified basic unit or a gal on its own. I think that has to be the case, doesn't it? Otherwise, you couldn't possibly know how to parse what follows the bottom of stack. Well, uh, what follows, uh, again, uh, what we're is saying is that, and uh, I think that that's another update uh, to uh, 5586, is that, um, if the gal label is present in the stack, then the bottom of the stack must be followed by ACH. Right, that's what it says at the moment, I think, doesn't it? Uh, it says it a little bit differently because it's only uh, addressing the, the case at the bottom of the stack. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you, you better find a gal. Um, uh, if you're popping all this stuff off the top, there better be a gal uh, somewhere to tell you to go look at the OAM or. To get rid of the uh, right, the and, th and that's that's uh, exactly um, why we inserting gal after SFC context label uh, yep. within a uh, basic unit, not the after right. the basic unit, because it it will be too late after basic unit because uh, SF already will receive uh, the payload. Right. Yeah, I understand that. Uh, a question, Greg. The, the, the metadata that, that, that you carry after the, stack, the end of the stack, it needs to be uh, preserved uh, all the way until the last SFF? Uh, that depends because um, the trace route will use uh, TTL uh, expire. So um, that uh, basically there are SFF that processes. Uh, uh, OEM uh, or performs OEM function might not be uh, the end of their uh, SFP. So what you're saying is uh, your metadata might disappear somewhere in the middle before the end of the SFP. But, but then, then the packet disappears. So basically, we are not uh, looking into their uh, communicating uh, OEM information uh, with their uh, data packet. So it's uh, only for active OEM case where the packet is active OEM test packet. Okay, and that you know that relates to what Stewart was saying. Put it at the bottom of the stack. If you put it at the bottom of the stack, then only the last uh, SFF will process it, right? Uh, um, yes, but the thing is that uh, everyone has to process it, don't they? Because you're going to pass. You're going to pass this get the the OAM information or the data unit for processing in the system, aren't you? Yes, th th that's that's the nature of SF, uh, SFC. The nature of SFC that we have a, mm -hmm. a sequence or chain of service functions that are mapped uh, connected to service function forwarders. So the service function is an uh, adapting function to the service itself. Uh, so an idea is that service function forwarders, uh, they know local service functions that are connected to them, and uh, they are aware of the topology of uh, service function path, SFP. Uh, it might, can be a load balanced, so then uh, there is a difference between uh, service function path and the render service path, which is a physical uh, topology in the network. Uh, so, but the thing is that each SFP uh, receives their uh, packet and then um, passes it to service function because that's why uh, the packet has arrived with the label or information that uh, S uh, S SFF understands. So, so the, the the problem is, of course, is that you're going to multiply the 
um, you, you're basically going to multiply the size of the stack by 50%. Uh, yes. 30%? Yeah, yes. 50%. 50%, uh, 50% uh, yeah. and but... is, that, is that practically a problem? I don't know. I mean, if you've got like two SFs in the chain, then so what? If you've got <laughs> 10 in the chain, we need to think about it. Uh, I understand, but the thing is that uh, the other benefit is that we do not then uh, require each and every node uh, to look uh, to the bottom of the stack because that's the most deterministic uh, place where we can put the gal to indicate that payload uh, is um, well. In, well in, indeed, every, indeed, every SFF needs to be there, doesn't it? Uh, Every SFF better look at the uh, no. There's a gal there because um, it's got to know how to interpret the payload, and you can't interpret the payload without knowing that there's a whole load of uh, ACH before you get to the payload. So every SFF must have one of these gals. Uh, well, in our proposal, yes. Every SF that's and that, that's that's why uh, we we came with a proposal uh, to insert gal into the uh, basic unit yeah, yeah. because again, so effectively basic <laughs> unit introduced as a emulation of NSH. So because uh, we don't have a payload uh, protocol type, which is a part of an NSH uh, format. So we need to some way of the mechanism that emulates uh, NSH functionality to indicate that the payload is OEM. Right. Well, so um, this is an on the fly suggestion. Given, and in many ways, this is really unfortunate, as I don't know what your delivery times are, but, um, you know, we're in the middle of this big discussion in uh, in MPLS about how we um, how we do things, how, how we do some of these new things in the stack. Um, I mean, one of your options is actually uh, to sequester the um, TTL of a um, of an SFL to be a protocol type. Mm -hmm. And I only sort of realised that on the. I mean, it's not what I would like to use that for, and people are fairly well aware of my preference. But nonetheless, we've crossed a Rubicon that would suggest that uh, you could make have a label in the middle of your um, triplet that was the protocol type, if that was the right thing to do. Well, we are crossing that Rubicon. I don't know quite whether we've got there yet, but we're awfully close to it. So one um, of the options... Hey, Stuart? Is... Stuart? Yep. yep. We actually have quite a number of bits that aren't used in the label field. Uh... Which are those? Yes, I have only eight, uh, a single octet. What, in the context label, you mean? Uh, actually, in the SI label. Uh, hang on a second, I don't see an SI label in his thing. Oh, I'm sorry, there's an SPI, and then there's an SI. Yeah. And the SPI, I think, is two octets, and the SI is one octet. Right. So, so what you're saying is, you look up the context label. You know that the label that follows is going to be handled specially. Mm. Right. And once you know that, you could actually handle it not as a an MPLS label, but as a data structure. Or whatever. But I mean, there's yeah, yeah. You know, we don't have to start mucking around with other fields because we do have space in the label field. Right. Right. But the I think the Rubicon we're crossing here is to 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 change the way we interpret mpls uh, label bits in the special case where uh, we know that we're to do it like that well Stuart, if if we take your you know your explanation of what the label is it's an instruction yeah, I, no, no, I think we're all on the same page. I mean, I'm just making sure that the working group, I mean, my concern is that the working group crosses this, makes this big, big change to MPLS, knowing what the consequences are. Yeah, and they no, do it as a collective. All I'm saying is I don't think it's really a change in what the label means. 
Well, I suppose not. I suppose, I mean, I suppose you, you, you could, of course, have every one of those entries in some label table and look it up. No one in their right mind would want to do it, but you're quite right. Um, you could just look this whole thing up as a 20 bit thing and get the answer. So, so yes, but that's not how anyone would do it, of course. I hope conceptually. Yes. So, so, so the idea of, um, you know, um, a context can a, a previous label can give you a context for the next label. Uh, yes. And then you can decode the 32 bits uh, the way you like, right? Um, the, well, except uh, you'd be you'd be very wise to not do anything with the S bit. Yeah. Well, the S bit, except. And that's uh, in line with what. Whoa, 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 whoa. Tarek and John are talking over each other. Oh, no. Okay. I, I, I wasn't sure. Go ahead, John. Well, I just. I think without doing anything, we've got 20 bits to play with. I don't want to go necessarily to the 31 bits. Yeah, yeah, you're right, John. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah, I, I was going to say that that's similar to the idea that uh, uh, Kiriti was presenting the other day where he embeds certain, certain things inside the label, right? Yeah. But I think John is right that actually this would not be a fundamental change to the uh, to the existing design for how you do SFC and MPLS, because um, you, you just have some more bits to interpret in that um, in that second label um, field. Now, there is a bigger question, which is, do you want to do this as a singleton solution for this problem, or do you want to wait and see how? Uh, the MPLS discussions going on at the moment play out and do something in sympathy with what their output is? Um, yes, uh, I think that uh, it definitely would be better to have a more general solution rather than uh, one uh, use case. But you, 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 you do know now that we have a viable solution that doesn't seem to change the MPLS architecture to fall back on if we don't go with anything else in any timely fashion. Um, yeah, uh, what what I need to just to double check because um, I don't remember um, by heart uh, what uh, fields uh, and how processed in a different scenarios in SFC and PLS because uh, the process interpretation and processing of uh, basic unit is somewhat different in um, uh, swapping mode and stacking mode. There's still a basic unit, though. Uh, it's still a basic unit. Uh, the thing is that um, in a uh, swapping mode, uh, the basic unit uh, remains unchanged. No, there there is a modification that the TTL is being processed, mm -hmm. uh, but um, their basic unit itself uh, is effectively uh, stays in the label stack. Whereas in the, uh, in the stacking mode, obviously, um, once the uh, SFF uh, receives and passes um, payload uh, to uh, the service function, uh, then uh, the basic unit um, uh, is popped. Yes, but you can always pass the packet on with some context or other, can't you? Oh, well, the problem is you've lost. Um... Yeah, we, we, yeah, I mean, you were going to strip this anyway, right? So you lost the gal as well. So you had to go into the next element of processing with some context. Right. But uh, again, in so what, what I need to verify is that uh, how it will work, because it, it seems it will work uh, in swapping mode uh, for um, uh, stacking mode, I'll need to look at whether um, what's how much of um, space we have to indicate that the payload is active and uh, what it ends up and so where we can do that because um, we don't want to uh, modify again one of the options would be is that um, then there will be a multiplicity of uh, OEM special labels uh, 
advertised by each uh, service function uh, forwarder. So then... Uh, oh, no, no, I think that... Um, so what you're worried about is that uh, we have to specially lay... We have to actually advertise every combination of the SFI and the... Um, the uh, OAM indicator. Whereas yeah, I, don't, I don't think so. But no, no, think no, no, we would do it structurally, wouldn't we? Or, I mean, at the, at the very worst, you would advertise two label for a given forwarder, one for OAM and one for not OAM. Mm -hmm. Right. But even if you wanted to do lots of them, right, even if you wanted to do 10 protocol types, you wouldn't advertise 10 labels. You'd advertise uh the um you, you'd either agree throughout the network or otherwise configure or otherwise advertise just the protocol types um sure. and the advertise only the sfis yeah i think actually Stuart, you did something similar like this a long time ago for service function chaining yeah probably it's you did something long. you indicated yeah. whether the nsh was there or not or something like that yeah, I can't remember. Yeah, but I remember we added, it in, we added it in for you specifically. Oh, I'll have to go and have a look. It was some years ago. Yeah. Um, um, so, um, but, the, the, you know, you are not going to advertise individually as a label through your favorite label advertising protocol all the combinations of SFI and all the combinations of, of protocol type, what you would do is you would know a priori, um, you know, because through the IANA registry or something, what the set of uh, protocol uh, types were, and you would, uh, um, you would, you would do your processing uh, on that basis. So you'd probably mask that off and then go and look up the SFI if you were doing it that way, you're doing it in a classic label lookup for, for the SFI, and then you'd go and process the uh, the other factor um, on your own. I mean, it's, it's, it's not a very difficult piece of forwarding code, I don't think. Not once you got through that context label, which you had to go through to figure out how that is, because until you've gone through the context label, you don't even know that this is a, a basic unit. So, right. um, yeah, so you're going to get, you're going to go into a different forwarding thread at that point. I'm not thread is not the right word, but a different piece of forwarding code mm -hmm. um, where you know that you're now going to process uh, SFI and label. Um, hopefully, you know that uh, protocol zero is there is nothing that you're going to declare. Um, and if protocol is other than zero, then you know to mask it off, look do look up your FFI as you would normally do it, and then do whatever you're going to do with your protocol type. So I don't think it's a major issue with uh, with the forwarder. Um, no, I, I agree that so there's uh, there, um, compl uh, complexity, uh, added complexity to the forwarder uh, would not be uh, any more than uh, with our current proposal uh, to insert the gel label. Um, so the, 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 the case where it would be horrible is if you were doing um, dual lookup in parallel, which some forwarders can do, but I don't think that really works with the SF um, SFI system. I don't think it works with any context label system, in fact. Yeah. Um, okay, so um, I will definitely uh, follow on your suggestion, Stuart. I appreciate it. And, um, well, it was John's suggestion, actually. Ah, okay. Your, uh, John and yours. Um, so, uh, to find uh, wh wh which field in uh, a basic unit uh, can be used as a uh, uh, payload protocol type indicator. Mm -hmm. so that would certainly be a lot more powerful than just fixing this for the OAM. Uh, well, if it solves the OAM problem, that's great. Uh, if it solves other people problems, <laughs> it's even better. You're going to come along and want a different OAM at some stage, I'm sure. Um, or the, your IOAM friends will come along and want something different. Well, I think that, again, uh, what will uh, the question would be is because uh, whether we want to uh, interpret uh, this uh, protocol type uh, saying that, oh, 
it follows immediately follows uh, their uh, label stack, or still um, say that the ACH immediately follows the label stack. But we can discuss it. Um, Greg? Yes. Um, I would also check um, the BGP SFC draft because we, we do talk about advertising MPLS labels in it. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, well then, uh, it was uh, very useful, uh, at least uh, uh, in my point uh, discussion. So we have an alternative solution to the original problem that seems yes. to uh, uh, provide a good technical alternative, and uh, then uh, there will be no uh, requirement uh, to update. 5586 will so have multiple uh, labels. Uh, one, uh, yeah, anyway. Yeah, one question to the MPLS uh, group uh, will still be because, as we um, in our discussion um, identified, I believe that uh, 5586 allows GAL label to be anywhere uh, for non MPLS TP environment, anywhere in the stack. But uh, the processing of uh, such GAL label, not at the bottom of the stack, is underdefined. Sorry, I got distracted by something. Say that again. So it seems that um, uh, 5586 allows GAL label to be not at the bottom of the stack for non MPLSTP environment. Yeah. yeah. But uh, such use case is underdefined in 5586. So there is no uh, mm -hmm. definition of what happens uh, when the uh, GAL label is found not at the bottom of the stack. All right. So, well, we should write an update that corrects that. So that whatever, if you go the GAL route, we should write an update that specifically says um what the semantics are so that you're not operating in any amb any ambiguous sort of landscape as it were and no one can claim that you're not obeying the architecture and stuff so we should do that but the first thing to do is to decide whether mm -hmm. you want to use the gal or whether you want to use another approach okay okay so um as i understand I, we, we'll skip but, uh, john 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 you're in there somewhere i had one question for you do we know whether anybody has actually implemented Galgash. Uh, um, as, as I understand, yeah. for MPLSTP environment, Galgash is implemented. Yes. Yeah. But yeah. it's for ITU type of OEM. And, and Andy may remember better, but I thought we'd had some pseudo wire requests for it as well. Okay. It's just something that maybe we should check on because uh, yes. I, I know at least we never we never implemented any of that stuff. Yeah, but we can't get rid of it because even if it's not been implemented, ITU land relies on it, and uh, they may or may not have done it. So I, I don't think it matters whether whether anyone's done it or not. The politics of unraveling that after all this time would be something that none of us want to live through. That's true. I mean, yeah. we, we don't want to go and. But that, just... that's, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> there is no one who was ever involved in those wars that will ever want to go back there again. I have one other question uh, coordination. Once we actually decide what we want to do, how much do we need to uh, coordinate with the uh, SFC working group? How much did we coordinate with them the first time round? I mean, I mean, I have no problem with coordinating with them anyway, because we are doing this. Um, uh, no, it's spring. Detnet. No, 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 no. They they kind of took themselves out of the picture with all the MPLS modifications, didn't they? Correct. Right. Uh, well, we'll tell them. I mean, send a liaison across or something. Okay, so we start right uh, internal IPF liaison. 
No, it, it's just the way we tell them. We tell the working group in a mail. I think that's fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, we can't, but we can't, you can't forget to do that. That's what I'm saying. Right, but I think we should we should let Greg decide how he wants to do his design first, and then bring a proposal to the working group. And then if it um, and because it's in this context, then um, uh, send it across to SFC for comment. Oh, that's 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 okay. Greg, remind me when you when we, you're ready to go. Yes, yes. Um, um, again, um, so I, I had to miss because I had a conflict uh, last uh, open DT uh, meeting. So I'll, I'll go back, uh, uh, review and listen more uh, to curate the presentation. And as I understand, we don't have a meeting this week, so that will give me some more time to prepare my day for the next week meeting. Perfect. Um, if it's easier to follow, I mean, there, there were two there were two things about the Kariti thing. The, 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 his attempted presentation, which got interrupted by lots of people and shamefully me included, um, uh, was an attempt at explaining what he explained at the last IETF. So you, you might do better to start with that and get the full context and then go and listen to that section of the joint of, the, of last week's meeting, because it was broken up with a lot of us sort of doing our usual engineering thing of teasing the thing apart. Okay, thank you. Great. Uh, um, I guess um, we have a counter proposal and you have to follow up, uh, Greg. Um, I will. Was, was there anything else? Uh, we no, again, uh, from my side, I, I greatly appreciate the discussion and suggestions and uh, uh, it, it looks like viable uh, alternative and uh, definitely le less uh, intrusive um, to the existing architecture. And uh, if it can be um, really, um, if this problem can be solved by a more uh, general solution, which is in line with the uh, idea proposed by Kiriti, it will be just awesome. Okay, great. Uh, I'll go ahead and stop the recording if uh, if we mm -hmm. yeah and yep. I'll stop sharing the screen. And if you want any follow up conversations, Greg, then uh, go ahead. <laughs>